wiring. There are three questions a referee would have to ask before judging a wire. What ball is to play? Who is responsible for the position of the ball claiming the wire? And what is the deadness? Once those items are settled, a referee can make a judgment. In this situation, black is claiming to be wired from blue. It has been determined that it is black's turn, that the opponents are responsible for black's position, and that black is only alive on blue. A referee will make a judgment usually looking from the wired ball's perspective toward the ball it's wired on. If it can't be easily determined, the referee will use test balls to help make the judgment. Before covering how test balls are placed, it is important to note that other objects can cause wires, specifically balls the striker is dead on and the peg. Also a hampered backswing can cause a wire. Now to the placement of the first test ball. This ball is placed very near the object that is causing the possible wire, a nearly imperceptible distance. It should be a paper width distance at best and not touching the upright. Also, it needs to be perpendicular to the line the striker ball would travel as it just misses this object. These white lines show that position. The referee can then check for the wire, but if it still can't be determined, a second test ball will be used. Before placing the second test ball, many referees will mark the ball that is wired from the striker ball claiming the wire. This is done in case of accidental movement. Using three to four ball markers at the perimeter of the ball is the best method. After marking the ball, another safety measure will be employed, that of using the mallet head as a stopper. Now let's look at how the three mallet heads are used when employing a second test ball. The mallet on the right is the stopper mallet, so the blue ball won't be accidentally moved when placing the test ball. The mallet on top is used as a T-square with a mallet shaft depicting the line the striker ball will travel as it just hits the left edge of the blue ball, the edge in question. The mallet on the left is used as a tool to gently place the test ball into position, barely touching the blue ball. All this has to be done very carefully so as to not change the blue ball's position. Once all this is done, the T-square mallet is carefully removed. Now the referee will make a ruling. From the perspective of the striker ball aiming at the blue ball, we can see that this is not a wire. To help explain this conclusion, let's look at a white arrow. Notice the white arrow is going to the right of the center of the test ball red. As long as this line is either center to red or to the right of red, there is no wire. Let's look at what a wire would look like. Here you can see the white arrow to the left of the center of red. This indicates a wire. You can plainly see how the wicket upright is infringing on the right edge of red. This indicates a wire. There is another method to check for wires that doesn't require the second test ball, which is the ball that can be the most disruptive. This method uses a collapsible mirror. These are widely available at department and hardware stores. The idea is to place the mirror near the striker ball, claiming the wire, so that when the referee looks down in the mirror, they are seeing an image of the line the striker ball will take toward the ball that it may be wired on. The first test ball will be used in the same way it was in our first example. 
please note a mirror is not mandatory when using this one test ball method. It's simply a way that doesn't make you lie down on the ground to check for a wire. As the referee looks down on the mirror, note how the image is upside down. This will have no negative effect on making a proper ruling. The referee positions him or herself in such a way to have the edge of black line up with the edge of the test ball red. To help with imaging, it is suggested to put a white background, such as a ball carrier, in back of the ball the striker may be wired on. You can clearly see the wicket is not causing a wire here. Now let's look at another example. Here when the edge of black lines up with the edge of red, it does show a wire. You can see how the blue ball is eclipsed. This indicates a wire. The USCA rulebook has a good illustration of what is a wire, which is presented here. It is a good idea to get together with an experienced referee when learning to judge for wires to get some good hands-on experience.